Is this what you wanted? Yeah, it is. Oh my God. If you guys can tell, I'm a little bit greasy. And the reason why I'm a little bit greasy is because I just got done cooking something that's very special and dear to me. In today's mukbang, we are going to be eating and cooking kimchi fried rice. Now this isn't gonna be the typical kimchi fried rice that you always see. I actually learned how to do this and I modified it to my own uh, preference uh, from this guy Stevie. It was, uh, used to be a part of this group called Little Meats LA. Now I grew up eating kimchi fried rice my whole life and I'm pretty sure every Korean American kid has. Now typically when you see like kimchi fried rice, you'll see spam in it and all this other shit. Uh, this one's gonna be a little different a little lick smackingly, a uh, uh, dick skin delicious. Ah, till this day, I don't understand why you guys want to see me eat or eat with me, but if we're sharing a meal together, that's what it's about. And let's talk about this dish, how I made it, and why it's so damn delicious. This right here, my friends, is the ultimate kimchi fried rice. Now, before we go ahead and dig into this, let's talk about some of the ingredients that we have in here. This right here is perilla leaf. Uh, if you guys haven't had this before, if you don't know what that is, it's actually shiso leaf that you've had a lot in a lot of Japanese cooking. We, of course, had to do it in with the crispy pork belly. We had to add our uh, little seaweed right here on the side, and we did our shredded up green onions, which I personally love. And right smack dab in the middle, my friends, is something that you guys know as a poached motherfucking egg. Whoa, I burped. Now this right here, my friends, is the piece de resistance. This is going to be a crisped up piece of sous vide pork belly. Now with the pork belly, I actually made it the night before. And when I made it the night before, I uh, chilled it and I pressed it down with the cast iron pan that you see right here. So I made it into a little bit of a, of a really hard brick. And I finished it off in the oven uh, this morning to make it crispy and then crunchy and delicious. So let's go ahead and give that a go. Oh yeah, you see that? Oh my God. Oh man. I feel like I do. There's something about Tender, crispy pork belly that just does it for you. You know what I'm saying? Do you hear that crunch? Oh my God. David, David, so we're gonna take this yolk and I gotta make sure I do this real quick for you guys because you know, blau, yes, blau, yes, blau, yes, 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 yes. Like I'm fucking somebody. A sous vide egg is very interesting because when you sous vide at 145 and you kind of let it cool down, the, the egg yolk becomes like a jammy consistency. So you just take a little bit of the jammy egg, mix it with whatever vegetation that you like and notice how big this fucking spoon is. And take that kimchi fried rice on the bottom, at like so. Let's add a little bit of that green onion there too. And Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Now, some of you might think when I'm eating this, like, yo, you should probably make a little more pork belly because there's other people that are gonna be eating this. Well, guess what? The kimchi fried rice already has diced up pork belly on the inside. Now, most people, when they make this kimchi fried rice, you'll see it typically done with Spam. I personally love Spam. There's nothing wrong with it. But for me, I kind of wanted to take it up to the next level. So the cooking oil that I use for this in particular isn't actually cooking oil. It's actually the fat from the pork belly that I cooked before I threw the rice in. And what you do with that is that you render out all the fat and you make the pork belly extra crispy. Now, a lot of people, when they do this, they tend to jump the gun. They see that the pork is cooked, it's brown, they're pretty much done with it. But you don't want it to be a pale brown. You want it to be nice and crispy because you need to render out all that fat and you want that, that delicious, like crunchy little pork treat inside. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. Look at that. Look at this treat. There's something that, you guys have had like dry seaweed before. Dried seaweed is awesome because it adds like this earthy flavor to your stuff. Like if you don't like seaweed, I understand, but don't, don't, don't fray away from this stuff too because seaweed also has MSG. So it makes your food taste really good. Now, some of you might be asking, you know, why do I need a cast iron pan for this or why am I cooking this in a cast iron pan? Well, let me show you something real quick. 
This is the piece de resistance. I think that's French. I don't know what that means, but I think it translates to that's bomb as fuck. Now, this bottom crispy joint right here is my favorite, favorite part of cooking kimchi fried rice or any fried rice in a cast iron pan. Uh, a lot of Asian people know this, but back in the day, like I remember like people would fight to have this part. It's like that burnt uh, rice bottom that you get. But imagine this burnt rice bottom mixed with pork fat and roasted kimchi juices, and that's what you get. Typically too, what you'll see when people make kimchi fried rice too, they just like to throw the kimchi right into the rice. I don't do that. I actually put it into the cooked pork belly because I'm actually making a second dish within this kimchi fried rice called um, uh, kimchi cheopokum. So this dish actually has a couple of components um, that most people might be surprised. When people do kimchi fried rice, like they'll just throw kimchi and the juices into the rice. Well, before you do that and before I do that, I actually put it into the pork belly. And the reason why is because that pork fat is gonna meld with that briny, delicious, like fermented kimchi, and it's gonna soak into it. And on top of that, with the heat, it'll roast, so it'll actually give it like another like level or depth of flavor. It's so good. This thing's like stick to your ribs type of food. We're gonna dig into this pork belly again, of course, per usual. Mm. Dip it into the jammy yolk, right? Dip it into the jammy yolk. Mm. Some of the favorite foods I like to make are the foods that I ate growing up. The reason why is because food is very important to me. Not just a fat ass that likes to stuff food in his face. You know, sitting around and sharing a meal with people has kind of disappeared. Um, it's all about fast food and like making food quick and gratuitous. Well, there was a culture that came with eating food, you know? It was a, it's kind of like how people used to bond, and, and I miss that. And one of the biggest reasons why I'm such an advocate of people making food is because it makes you appreciate your food a lot more too. You know, there's a lot of people in like this Yelp culture, this Yelp elite culture where they go on, they like to bash other restaurants about the foods that they make and they want to critique what they're doing. But the funny thing is, if you give that same person who was such a connoisseur in being a chef, a knife, a cutting board, and a pen, they wouldn't know what the fuck to do with it. So my personal opinion is like, if you can't cook, you don't really have much of an opinion on how food should be made or what's good. And another bigger reason why I love food is because my mom is such a great cook. And I was very blessed to have a mother who, despite the fact that she worked 80 plus hours a week, you know, she helped my dad at the church that we were attending cooking food every Sunday. So mind you, she was working at the store, I think from like 8 a.m. to like 8 p.m. when I was younger. And that's Monday through Saturday. And then on Sunday she would, or on Saturday night, she would come home and like make sandwiches and like pack up all these drinks for um, Sunday school for the kids. And then after that, she would make the, the church um, food. And that's just the type of mom that I have, which is why food is very important to me because food is honestly love. You know, you, you, a lot of times people, they don't get it. Um, especially in Asian culture, they'll say stuff like, oh, I don't hear your parents say I love you. Well, I'll tell you where love is, man. Love is in this kimchi fried rice. Mm. Oh yeah. The drink that I'm gonna pair this delicious salty goodness with. This is like my go-to beer. And remember back in the day I said I didn't like beer, which was absolutely true. I used to fucking hate it. I, I thought it was piss water, but something about me getting older, and I don't know if like your, your taste buds change or your palate changes, but I actually do like one good beer. So let's pop this bad boy open. Sapporo! Cheers. And that's that taste right there. It tastes sweet. I don't know why, what happened? What happens to you when you're older? What we have here is a, a, a different type of kimchi. Uh, I like to eat this kimchi with this fried rice because this fried rice is so decadent and it already has the spicy kimchi inside. I want to eat it with something a little more light and refreshing. And this is what this white kimchi is. So it's kind of like kimchi with uh, more liquid and no, no chili pepper. Or... You could drink the brining liquid. And I should probably have brought chopsticks, but I didn't. You, of course, can just eat this straight up. Mm hmm. Mm. 
lot of you are wondering why am I eating this straight out of this? Because this is mine. Nobody else gonna eat out of it, it's mine. You know, here goes another piece of pork belly, bottom cap down, crunchy top, listen for it. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, when you're making kimchi fried rice, there's something very important that you should know. Um, it's the type of kimchi that you use. Some of you will go into these American stores and you'll see kimchi and it looks a little bright and it's not all the way red through. You don't want to use that kimchi. And the reason why is because really forbidden kimchi has to be used with fried rice or even stews because that flavor is permeated throughout the whole cabbage and you need those juices and that flavor to go into this rice to even color it correctly. But what kind of foods did you guys grow up with is what I'm wondering. For me, this is one of my dishes that really, really kind of like hit the spot for me. But if you're not a Korean American out there, I kind of wonder like what you ate. You know, funny enough, I remember when I was a kid, um, I just loved my mom's like kimchi fried rice. It was like the best thing in the world to me. I wanted to eat it all the time. And um, specifically, uh, this one day, uh, I kind of, you know, my, I would eat lunch at school. My mom would give me a couple of bucks to buy like a sandwich or something. And instead of doing that, I decided to pack away like kimchi fried rice and put it into a lunch box. And then I remember my dad stopped me and he told me um, that I shouldn't do that. And I asked him why, and it was because like, he said, you might get made fun of, you know, it smells and people aren't gonna want that around. And for me, I didn't understand that. I didn't understand that why people thought my food smelled or why people would make fun of me because of the food that I eat, because it's just something that I really enjoyed. And I kind of got it because I remember one time in school, uh, this other kid brought like uh, chow mein over and a bunch, like, you know, we didn't have too many like white kids in our school, but the few that were there, they kind of clowned on him saying like, oh my God, what are you eating? Like worms and shit. And I, I, I'm not, it, it's weird, you know, how people can kind of like make fun of you based on the food that you eat, that you enjoy because it's foreign to them. But we kind of live in a world now where, you know, we're a little bit more cultured. The, the internet has allowed us to understand food a little more. So if a kid brings fried rice to school, I'm pretty sure all the white kids are like, yeah, can I get some? But it's, you know, but when I was a kid, we were kind of like taught to be a little bit ashamed of the food that we ate just because other people didn't understand it. And ignorance in that kind of sense is the thing that hurts us the most. They didn't know the bombness of kimchi fried rice. And nowadays I'm in LA and there's like a white guy walking up to me like, hey, do you know what kimchi is, bro? I'm like, bitch, do you know what kimchi is? What the fuck? You don't see me walking up to you asking you what a fucking hamburger is. Uh-oh, here it is. The best piece right there. God. You know, in between these pork bellies is so good because the bottom part is very meaty and steak-like. And the middle part has like this creamy, delicious fat. And then you get the nice, delicious texture or crunchy texture from the pork skin once you broil it under the oven. This looks like a smudge on my hand. It's not a smudge, it's actually a bruise from when I had an IV in my arm when I got back surgery not too long ago. Um, but you know, before I started doing these videos, I actually researched uh, a couple of people who are doing mukbang and mukbangs are cracking me up because I saw some people just kind of do some like ridiculous, exaggerated shit. Like there was this guy eating a piece of bread like it was the most delicious thing he's ever eaten in his life. And I was like, bitch, get the fuck out of here. That's white bread. This motherfucker said, oh my God, it's bread. <laughs> you know when food is really good, you kind of like don't know when to stop eating it. And that's my biggest problem. Like if I don't like the food that I'm eating, I know automatically how full I am. I'm like, ah, I don't really need another bite of this. I'm pretty full. But when you really, really like the dish, you can't stop. It's like you get possessed by like the cookie monster or some shit. Um, num, 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 num. Mm. Oh. I'm getting damn full. I'm almost there. This has to be like close to 3,500 calories, maybe 5,000 calories. 3,500, 5,000 are two big different numbers, you dumbass. Oh, God. 
Now, just then, I still don't know, how these little Korean girls eat all this goddamn food? Still doesn't make sense to me. They just like sit in front of the camera. Oh, 안녕하세요, 여러분. 오늘은 김치 볶음밥 먹겠습니다. 안녕하세요. And they fucking eat like 18 pounds of food. I'm telling you right now, their dookie is crazy. You know what pork belly reminds me of? Pork belly reminds me of Filipinos. <laughs> I actually fell in love with eating pork belly and the reason why I added it to this dish was because I personally love um, Filipino lechon. Lechon is one of the best ways to eat pork on this earth. My God. I'll tell you something, dude. Filipino people know how to eat pork. God damn. I first had lechon at like a um, Filipino family party. And if you Filipino, you already know what's up with family parties. You motherfuckers celebrate everything for no goddamn reason. What are we celebrating today? Oh, you didn't hear? Uh, John Paul just parted today. <laughs> <coughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I'm gonna have to tap out. I can't do this. It's too much food. I'm surprised I ate this much in the first place. So, I hope you guys like this mukbang. I hope you like the um, the new rendition where I kind of, kind of, I don't really teach you how to make it because I don't really have time to set it up like that. But I did give you guys a little bit of insight on how to make this at home. Remember. Cook your food. It'll help you gain perspective on the food that you eat, especially when you go out. Also, it saves you money and it helps eliminate food waste. So just let me know in the comments below what else you guys want me to make. Um, if you guys want me to do another mukbang, this is the second one. The first one did really well and you guys wanted to see more. I was like, hey, I'm gonna make this food anyway, so I might as well just record it. So let me know, y'all. Love you to death. I said I'm gonna stop eating, but I keep on eating. This is what I'm talking about. When the food is good, you just can't stop.